Yeah. Go nuts I, I with it. I have to bust it out. With that, are you guys ready? I'm ready. I, I can't wait for this. We're going to start with the first award of the day. It is the most valuable person, not necessarily player, but the most valuable person from the Browns in the 2023 season. And after all the votes have been tallied, a clear unanimous number one, Mr. Kevin Stefanski. Andrew Berry edged out Joe Flacco in the second place spot and coming in third was the guy they signed off the couch out of his living room in week 13 of well, the season. I'm guessing that we all must have voted that way. That's exactly the way I voted. I yeah, actually, was not unanimous. It I wasn't had, unanimous. I had Schwartz in Barry. I didn't have a player in there. I can't believe voted for postseason awards, didn't have a player I, in there. I had one. Wow. That's How did they all end up, they end up one, two, three, if Jason didn't have any and I only had one of those guys? I guess all my votes counted for five. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little obnoxious. So that's that KYC bias. It's the KYC bias. Yeah, that must be. Kevin Stefanski had seven of the eight first place votes. Okay, okay so yeah, you, I had you had him on. I had Kevin on there. I had Kevin one. Yeah, I had oh, Kevin you said one. you didn't have any of them. No, no, he no. said no players. I had no players. I had Kevin one, Schwartz it's oh, most valuable and Barry person. three. I had I actually had Amari Cooper one, a little outside the box thinking. Wow. I had Kevin two and Miles Garrett three. Well, I feel very cool. I, I'm, I'm great with that because uh, the, the way I voted the one, two, and three is the way that we collectively it's, mm. it's how it turned I, out. I had Schwartz in there. I'm surprised Schwartz did not make the list. Didn't make it. You and me. Yeah. They were finished one point behind Joe Flacco for third place. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, me keeping him off kept him out of the running, and I'll tell you why I did it. We just had a Jekyll and Hyde defense. They were so great at home. Yes. They were elite at home because we used the tag elite. I still hear, by the way, media members saying we had an elite defense. We did not have an elite defense this year. We did not. We had a very good defense. They were elite at home. They were so substandard on the road it brought their average grade down, and that's yeah. why I didn't have and, Schwartz on, the, on a, my list. And our awards include the postseason. We don't have to just be the regular no. season. No, yeah. It's a fa I looked at it as it was such a burning pile of trash <laughs> yes. last year. <laughs> that's a fact. And they did fix a lot of it. It's, right. it's, and they had so many injuries that I thought Kevin deserved the credit for keeping it together. Schwartz deserved the credit for fixing the defense, yeah. at least from where it was. And Andrew Barry for bringing in the right guys and fixing the roster. I would have had to, him at to four. sustain. I, Flacco is a great story, but for me, the fact that they were still playing well without him before he even got in there. I know, but when we look back me. on this season ten years from oh, now, you can't Flacco tell this story. tale without Absolutely. Flacco. I you can tell it Cooper, without Jim Schwartz. Yeah. I thought Amari Cooper was the the one thing on the offense that was steady. The that's whole fair. Year. No, that's fair. Yeah, I didn't think that way. So that's yeah. uh, that's a good decision. The other, we didn't mention this. I don't think. He's up for assistant coach of the year. He is. Jim yeah, Schwartz. One of the yeah, Jim finalists. Schwartz. So congratulations to Jim. I hope he wins it. And let's see if Jim can win another award. The best offseason acquisition the Browns made all season. This was a pretty tight race, but the guy you guys just talked about, Jim Schwartz, is our winner with 17 total points. Dustin Hopkins, the kicker they traded for right before week one, came in second. So and DeJuan Jones, you're, you're the draft You're announcing these in a different order in which you sent them to us, right? Because I had that as yeah. the... Yeah. Okay. I sent you on the rundown the order yeah. we're going to do them in, though. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. I want to put the ones... I'm just calling up my text back to you. Got you, And yeah. I went to number two, and I'm like, oh, did I skip oh, that one? I just realized now that I put Flacco on my list, and he wasn't an off-season acquisition. You should have told correct. me to correct that, Mike. No, Flacco counted. It, it, it was an acquisition to move. I know we called it off-season. Well, oh, I didn't was, put him on there because of that, because was, you said yeah. off-season. So yeah. I left... I should... I was like, why did these guys vote for Flacco? And I was like, well, he wasn't an offseason season So acquisition. basically, they yeah. took G. Bush's list because I was with McNuggets when I picked these. Yeah. So this is a perfect list. To want. I want to go for not even the G. first one. It. Let's go to the third one. Dewan Jones. Wait, what, can you put the, the list back up there again? Yeah, it came out Jim Schwartz first, Dustin Hopkins second, Dewan Jones third. I'm batting 1,000. That's exactly the way I had my ballot. I, I had Dalvin Tomlinson third. I just thought the way that he held down I the middle had, of the defense. Oh, I had wow. Flacco third, but if it wasn't for Flacco, I would have put DeWan Jones. I, I, I think, to be truthful, the DeWan Jones, like, I mean, that's the biggest bright spot we have. You talk about people who you didn't expect. It's like getting a gift to somebody, and you're like, I didn't expect to get this gift, and it can be something like my bag of popcorn, but the popcorn's free. So you're going to take it and be happy and eat it at lunch. Yeah. <laughs> DeWan Jones is the bag of popcorn and right tackle that took over, and it's awesome. He, We found a, a future star worth in the draft on a flyer uh, shout out to dewan jones okay i i, I can't disagree with anything because that's that was my yeah. one two and three 
Uh, I, I didn't put Flacco on there because it did say off-season yeah, acquisition. I had a brain freeze on and that one. In, Otherwise, I would have had the same three because I had the other two. Okay. Go ahead, So Mike. not a lot of dispute or, de you know, debate not on yet, that. Not yet, but we're getting to the dispute. This next okay. one, the biggest surprise of the year is we, it was by far the closest race we had. We had seven different guys get votes. The winner had the fewest number of number one votes of any category, and it was the closest race between one and two. This was the biggest surprise of the year. And the results, JOK takes the gold, Joe Flacco the silver, and Dewan Jones now that's a, the bronze. Oh, that's you guys exactly, missed one. That's exactly the three I had in the exact order. Okay, but you guys missed one. So I, I don't know how Dustin Hopkins is that's, on there. That's exactly it. I mean, Dustin what Hopkins we, got votes? Missed, no, uh, I, no, I don't Jones care about votes. How is he point? not in the top three? He, he biggest surprise? Who the hell expected him to come? Do what he did this well, year. Well, Joe Flacco is the biggest surprise. Yeah, I agree with I, that. I mean, who won it? Joe didn't win it, did he? Well, JOK. I had JOK as the yeah, biggest but surprise. Here's why I didn't vote for Hopkins, and I was Hopkins all year. I had meaty, like, I thought Hopkins would be okay, and he was fantastic. I thought all those guys would be nothing, and they were all fantastic, too. I thought, I'll be honest with you. I thought Hopkins would be better. When, when, I heard, when they had, but had Hopkins, you go back and we looked at his kicking from, I believe, the Chargers, and he wasn't terrible. Well, he was 50% right. from beyond 50 yards. Right. He, he was, was eight better eight. than he, But we knew – we didn't even know JOK could be a player in the NFL Well, anymore. I had JOK well, number one on my list. I had Flacco, Hopkins, JOK because Flacco and Hopkins weren't even on the team. And that's So, fair. of course, they're the biggest yeah. surprise. Yeah. Flacco was on his couch. Until yeah. November, so I, well, I, I had J Flacco at number three. To me, JOK went from one of the worst linebackers in the league to one of the best. That at least was he was on the team all year. I, 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 well, I don't know why that. Why does that make him less of a surprise? Because you, you, they, where they drafted him, there's some level of expectation. He didn't have a very good year last year, but he was decent as a rookie. So there's still some level of expectation. Yeah, they traded God. for Hopkins. There was no thinking, expectation. You know what? Bull can't get out of his mind the same thing I can't. Yeah. Dequell Jackson, who's been the best linebacker yeah. in, in the Browns' Said second history. The guy can't play. Sat here on this show and said, "I'd cut him." Yeah. If you if you look at it, JOK, could you, if you squint it hard enough, you could argue he had a better year than Miles Garrett. Well, he had a hundred tackles, twenty tackles behind the line of scrimmage. This is this and is, three and a half sacks. This is this is this is crazy. Twenty tackles for losses. In crazy. the second half of the year, it wasn't even close. JOK was way better. Than and Miles you know Garrett. what? And, and and you mentioned this earlier. Yeah. We did have the benefit of the playoff game. He, he was dominated. the only guy that showed That's up. That's right. In the no, playoffs. no, not showed up. He dominated. He dominated. Yeah. You're right. You're right. He He yeah. looked like a, a big time player in a big time yeah. game. It was tough. I was debating between DeWand and and uh, Hopkins for the last spot for me. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. That one was uh, pretty contentious. The next one, I'm gonna tell you the two guys who just missed the podium. This is the biggest disappointment award. Mm. Mm. Juan Thornhill and Jerome Ford missed coming in third by one vote. So in a good thing. Or for them, it's a good thing they missed it. But our top three, and there was a pretty unanimous number one, Elijah Moore. Yep. Wow, in second I didn't place, have one. Zadarius Smith. And yep. in third place, Deshaun Watson. Who's I had one? Deshaun Watson number one. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I gave Deshaun the benefit of the injury. Yeah. I, can't, I, don't, I didn't blame yeah, but him. But my for expectations injury. for Deshaun were a million times higher than. I had him third. I yeah. kind of, right where both of you guys are saying the injury, but at the same time, the expectation level. Yeah. I had Elijah one. I had Jerome Ford two and Deshaun. I had Thornhill two and Elijah Moore three. If Deshaun Watson would have played the whole season and we could watch him play and he played poorly, I would say, okay, well, you do. That's the way I went too. But if you, I can't say that he didn't ask to be hurt. It just is what it is. But I will take Elijah Moore. They, there was media members doing victory laps on this playbook. Well, I, Elijah Moore is going to be a scat back and a receiver. He's going to catch the ball. I, I'm surprised it. you guys think Juan Thornhill was that big of a disappointment. I did. I did. I, I did. I I did. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't think he was that big of a disappointment I, at all. Well, I, I thought when you look at the plays, I was expecting more splash plays. I thought Ronnie Hickman made more plays than he, he did. I, I just, yeah. I saw a lot of games where they look. I've mentioned this before. They made it look like random tackles, but if he doesn't get that guy down, it's going to the house. He had a yeah. lot of big, open field plays that, to me, saved a lot of. Bigger chunk play touchdown touch. I, do, I did see him out of position a couple times too. Well, no, he's perfect. Yeah, I, I just, I just thought, yeah, right. I, is he better than John Johnson? Sure. Yeah, well, guy did a whole a lot of talking in, in the beginning of the season as he, as if he was this special safety, well, and he was not special. And he, I had, and, Elijah Moore came in with that hype. He was yeah. my one. 
Zadarius Smith, we, 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 we forgot did about that. victory laps yeah, with Zadarius Well, Smith. I wasn't as high on him as and everybody else. So I, I know you him. weren't, but yeah. everybody else loved that yes, signing. Yes. He was number two. And for me, Jerome, Jerome Ford was number three. I, I thought he was going to be the guy. I yeah. really did. And he had every opportunity to seize that role. And he just he under, le he he underwhelmed me this he year. He left a lot of food on his plate. You know, there's a lot of games where you see one cut here, one cut here. That's 20 more yards, 15 more yards, or even short yardage. Just ramming it in there and yeah. just making sure you get the first down. I think he needs a, a little bit of work, but he was a little bit underwhelming after Nick Chubb went yeah. down. Okay. Uh, one thing on Jerome Ford, Jason, I know we talked about, and you in particular talked about, he was the future of the running back room for the Browns. You actually yeah. had him voted the highest on your list at second. Why wasn't he above Elijah Moore? Because he, he had a better season than Elijah Moore. Yeah, I, I still think. think he had a better yes. season than yeah, Elijah Moore. Yeah. And the expectation for Elijah coming in was still – Jerome Ford was still an unknown, and I guess to an extent Elijah Moore was too, right. but the way that he came in here with the level of expectation, it was certainly higher – Jerome Ford, Jerome Ford at least had a few good games. Yeah, I had a couple of nice Did Elijah runs. Moore have any? They had one good game, maybe. Elijah Moore, we, yeah. we were sold that he could possibly be the heir apparent to Mark Cooper. I don't think so. I think Mark, I think he's a three he's or a four jet. receiver. That's all he is. Yeah. Three or four, he's a guy that you can, you know, check it down to. But as far as all this dynamic playmaking, I didn't see it. The skill set is there. The performance was not. No, not even close. All right. All right, next up, this one. I made this award, honestly, just to honor Nick Chubb. It was the most devastating injury of 2023, which obviously we don't want to celebrate injuries, but Nick Chubb, we missed you so much. And Nick Chubb was the unanimous eight out of eight first place votes, the only player in any category to sweep the first place votes. Deshaun came in second, and Dewan Jones, the yeah, Brown Stella order. rookie, came in third. Yeah, that was my order, too, that exact order. I, I had Jack Conklin, Conklin, too. Apparently I'm wrong because nobody else had him. And I had Deshaun three. I, I was I was gonna shake the world up and make uh, Nick Chubb the MVP, the most valuable person. I'm gonna keep it real, because it, here's the way it happened. I say if you could add, because I saw it around the internet. If they said add one person out of all the guys that's injured, and you add them to the team with Joe Flacco, how much would that person? How what what team would be the best? And I say, yeah. well, give me Nick Chubb, put him with Flacco, and I think the Browns could have really done something. That's a little telling that nobody picked Deshaun Watson one. I know, right? Well, He's but the again, quarterback. I know I, I, he is, but Nick Chubb was week two, and it was a devastating injury. Yeah, but... Like, when you look at the... There, we don't have that piece of tape on Deshaun. In fact, there was some people said, when, when exactly did this happen? With Nick, we had that gut-wrenching video that even today when I see it, I, I squirm when I see it. It was devastating both yeah. in the moment to the player and to the season. Right, but in the end, if Deshaun had been playing like a superstar here, we would all pick them number one. Yes. That's a fact. Yes. Yeah. I yeah, think, that's I the think, guy you can't lose if yeah. he's playing well. I think we don't mention him because we, we mentioned a bunch of other people who had extraordinary seasons outside of the norm. So Flacco comes in, has a crazy season, yeah. so it minimizes the, like, the, the, the shock that Deshaun got hurt. Yeah. Yeah. At, whereas running back, nobody played great. Yeah. Now, if you, let's spin it forward for a second. If you could only have one of the two back for next year, Deshaun okay. or Nick, cool. <laughs> which one are you taking back? That's Deshaun. A, I would take Deshaun. You got to take the quarterback. You got to take the quarterback. It's yeah. interesting. Because if he – because the, if Deshaun can't be a great player again, then the Browns are screwed ultimately. Yeah. So we have to have him back, and we have to see him play a full season and hopefully play like a great I, I player. I would take – Nick Chubb. I, I'm different from you guys. And yeah. here's, here's why. He is definitively in the top three at his position. Now, yes, the quarterback is the more important position. Yeah. But we we don't even have Deshaun Watson as top six in his conference. I hear you, but ultimately, when's the last time a team no, won I a know, Super Bowl with a great running back? No, I, I know exactly happen. what you're saying. Could happen this year yeah. with McCaffrey. It could. Uh, all right, we're going to take yeah. a break. When we come back, the Offensive Player of the Year and the Defensive Player of the Year. The votes are in. They have been counted. They have been overlooked by Price Waterhouse to make sure they're official.